Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are how do the blower relays on a furnace control board work. So right now we're looking at the bottom of a furnace, so this is a gas furnace, and I really want you to know how these work in order to troubleshoot these systems anytime you have a problem with your blower motor. So I first want to give you a quick little tour of what's going on here, and you have L1 right here, that's your power into the board for your 120 volts for a gas furnace. Down here, you have your common neutral bar, so you have your white wire for the blower motor mounted on that common neutral bar. You have four speeds to this particular blower motor, and they're all mounted here. Two are on the spare terminals, which are listed as M2 and M1, or they may be listed as spare right here. And then there's two additional speeds right here. So these are the ones that's going to be running. The ones that are on the spare are not going to be used for the blower motor speeds, but you need to have a safe place to put them so they don't backfeed any voltage onto a ground and short out the, the blower motor. So these two right here, you have your heat speed and your cooling speed. And so you're going to need to select that based on uh, the cubic feet per minute needed for heating and for air conditioning for the system size. So in this, in this case, and most normally, you're going to have your highest fan speed, which is black, on your cooling. And in this case, blue is your second from lowest speed, and red is your lowest speed, and in this case, orange is your second from highest speed. And so we're just choosing to use our black and blue speeds on this lower relay. Underneath these black boxes, you have a relay. And so it's made up of a coil and your contacts right here. And this is a direct current relay. So on the control board, regardless of whether it's an old one like this or a newer one like this, it's going to rectify the voltage from alternating current to direct current. You're going to supply direct current to this coil through the board. And what's going to happen is you have a contact on the back of this control board down here connected to this piece of metal. And do you see this right here, how it moves back and forth? So it's normally connected, so it's normally closed between here and here, and when you power this coil, it's going to suck this down, and now the contact between here and here are going to be open. I also want you to understand that both of these relays are used anytime you're telling the control board to turn the blower on. Now we have the multimeter set on voltage, and we have one of our two probes mounted to the common neutral bar down here, and remember that those are all connected together, and that's connected to the common wire to the blower motor back there. And so this is a 120 volt permanent split capacitor blower motor. And what I did is I disconnected the wires that are on the heat and cooling terminal of this, this relay right here. I disconnected them because I want to check for voltage on the relays here. I'm going to do that in order to explain how this is working. I also have an alligator clip right on our R uh, terminal right here. This is our thermostat connections. And I'm going to take our other alligator clip right here and connect it to the G terminal in order to turn the, the fan on. First, anytime that you have power to the control board, you're going to have power over to the continuous fan. So you see that we're reading 117.9 volts. So that means that from your main power in on L1, it's connected right over to here, and we have no power on the EAC. If we have no power on the EAC, then that means that we have no power to this second switch down here because this terminal and this terminal are connected on the back of the board. Anytime you see these side by side like this, this is the, basically the switch to turn the, the blower motor on in general. And then it's a matter of if this switch is powered or not, which of these two terminals is connected. So first things first, let's just go ahead and put it on the EAC. You see we have no power, we're, we're measuring 4.7 volts. Let's connect over to G, and now you see we have 118 volts over here, and we have nothing on the continuous fan. So if you had one of these speeds connected to the continuous fan, that blower motor would run any time that this furnace had power, except for when you're calling heat or cooling to turn on, and then it would run on the designated speed down here. So Right now, it's connected, your main power is connected over to EAC, as you can measure and see with the multimeter, 118 volts. And I also want to point out that if you have an electronic air cleaner, you would connect it right here because the whole point of this is that this terminal is not going to get powered until the blower motor is going to be running. So you don't want to have the electronic air cleaner running all the time. You only want it to run when anytime the blower motor is running. So 
Anyway, so now we come down to here, we're connected, there is no terminal here, and so this relay is normally closed to your heat. And so you're going to see 118 volts. We have no power over to our cooling tap. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch these terminals from R to G, and now I'm going to touch from R to Y instead. Now you may have heard that click, and you see now we're measuring 118 volts on the cooling tap. And we read nothing on our heat tap. Of course, we're still going to have this connected to the EAC up here because that's how the power is getting over, over to here. It's traveling through this, these contacts here over to these contacts. So that's how this works. And so the main thing that happens with these boards, when they do fail, it's the contacts in here. And you can check them by measuring resistance, or you can do it like we were just doing to see if you have a voltage drop across the contacts, indicating that you have pitting on the contacts themselves. Now, before we move on, I just want to make sure that you're aware anytime the thermostat reaches the temperature that you're trying to set it at and it no longer needs air conditioning to run, what's going to happen is the R and Y are going to disconnect. And so you're no longer going to have your 24 volts on the Y terminal, but you are going to still supply power to the blower motor. As you can see, we still have 119 volts. And that's because there's a blower off delay built onto the board, so it's a timing mechanism that is going to allow power to the blower motor for maybe additional 30 seconds or 60 seconds after your outdoor compressor turns off. And that's because your, your coil, your evaporator coil, is still low in temperature. There's still a lot of condensation on it. So you're going to continue to run the blower motor to rise the temperature of the evaporator coil up. And you're also going to be drying some of that condensation off of that coil. And so after that 30 or 60 seconds, then it's going to shut off power to the blower motor. So now you see that we no longer have power to the blower motor. We only have five volts right there. Now that's for air conditioning mode, but anytime you turn your fan on by putting 24 volts in the G terminal, it may take one second or two seconds for the blower motor to turn on and then it may be one or two seconds for the blower motor to shut off. Now I have the power off to the furnace. I've switched my multimeter over to resistance, and what you're gonna do is you can test from here to the continuous fan. You should have 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance, and then over to the EAC, it should not be connected. And so you see it's actually in mega ohms, so that is not connected. If it is connected, or if it has anywhere, say, 5 ohms or 10 ohms or something like that, you'll know that there's some, some burnt contacts in there, or it's kind of stuck in position. And so you should have nothing between here and down here. So mega ohms and mega ohms. And that's because the power is going to need to travel through here over to one of these two. So, so you can check some of these with resistance, and a lot of these control boards have an enclosed relay like this right here. Here's another example right here, and here's yet another one right here. So you're really looking for a voltage drop between L1 and your cooling tap or L1 and your heating tap in order to see if you have a high resistance across the contacts in here. So I also want to point out that your heat speed is usually used for your fan, Cooling speed is usually used for air conditioning mode, and this heat terminal is not going to have power on it in heating mode until the full sequence of operation for heat is complete and the heat exchanger is warmed up. Make sure to check out our other videos on control boards down in the description section below, and make sure to check out our website over at acservicetech.com where we have a bunch of thermostat wiring diagrams as well as our quizzes, calculators, podcast, and quick tips. Make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures book, Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.